Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a new hook called Use Context. So, if you are already aware of the Use Context hook, then you could probably just skip this video. But if you are familiar with like Redux or some type of state management, context, or more specifically, the Use Context hook can be used to kind of replace that in, in a sense. Okay. It's just a way to basically expose some type of state or function or variable and have it be able to be grabbed in your nested components. So if you're familiar with prop drilling, um, I'm going to show you an example with prop drilling first, and then I'm going to try to convert it to use the use context hook. So I have a basic React app here, and we have three additional JSX components. We have header, login, and welcome. And we can just look through those real quick. Basically, the header is this blue header here. And it just shows a logout button if the user is logged in. And look at this, it just has a button and when you click it, it calls a logout function. Okay, the login page is just a page that has a simple input box. And when you type into it, we keep track of some state. And then finally, if you click the login button, it basically uses that name state and passes it to a login function that is also passed in as props. And then finally, a welcome page that says, um, hello world. Okay, so if I log in here, Bob, log in, this changes the hello world and we have a logout button we can click click that all right so with prop drilling the header needs to be able to access the user right so what we're doing down here with prop drilling is we are setting um, some state called user up here in a parent component in this case case is app.js and we pass that user state down into the children okay so header has access to um, user and if you look at this we basically have a conditional that says display the logout button if user is set. And then we also pass in a logout function, a login function. Those aren't as important, but the important part is you may be using this user object in various different components, right? Your header could be complex. You could have drop downs in it. So your header could be composed of different JSX components, and those can dive deeper into more JSX components. And if you wanted a really, really low level, like if you look at the tree, if you visualize the DOM tree, the very last JSX element might need access to the user. So you have to keep passing this user down and down and down between all of your components. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is basically using the use state or sorry, the use context hook to just allow the header to grab that user directly from something called a context. So hopefully you understand all this. This is just a an initial prop drilling example, and let's just start with using the context. So to start off, the first thing you want to do is you want to declare a new context. So I'm going to say const user context is equal to react.create context and you can call it like that. In fact, I believe you can add a default value. Um, I don't think it matters too much. But now we have something called a context object which you can wrap your JSX components in to provide them access to the use context hook. So we haven't talked about the hook yet, but we will in just a second. But this is the most important step. This is the first step, I mean. You have to declare a context. And then for any time you want a component to have access to whatever variable function state that's stored in your context, you need to wrap your component with a provider, okay? So there is a provider, so you say user context dot provider, and you can pass the default value. So in our case, we are going to pass it user. And I'm going to wrap the header because the header needs to know about that user object. And the change would be we don't want to now pass in user as a prop, we want to use the use context hook. So let's just remove user as a prop, the app might crash or might not work. But Okay, so the, the main takeaway was using your context that you created at the top or in other files, you can import this somewhere else if you want to. You can do dot provider and wrap whatever component which is going to be needing to use that context. And then at that point, any nested component, like if the header is made up of different JSX components, those all have access to your context function or variable or whatever you want to store in it. Okay, so kind of Hopefully I, I hopefully I drove that home, drove that home. Um, let's go to the header.jsx and actually use a hook called use context. So inside of here, 
Notice that we did remove user from a prop. We're no longer accessing it from props. So how do we access it? Well, since in the app.js file, we are wrapping the header component with the provider, we can now say const user is equal to use context. And then the, the interesting part is you actually have to pass in that context that you created. So first of all, let's import this. So I'm gonna, oops, let's import this from the React. So if you notice here, it's importing a named export. But we need to pass in the context that we're trying to use. So if we go back to app.js, this is the context. So in order to access this context from the header JSX component, we just need to export it, right? So export, and now in our header, we can go back in here and we can say import user context from dot slash app. Okay, so now we have access to that user context and we can pass that to our hook. And at this point, we should have access to that user variable or user state, okay? So now if I log in, so I'll say Bob, notice that it all works as it did before. I can log in and log out. And basically what that is doing is we are passing this state variable user as our value to our context. And then we can grab that out of the context using this use context hook. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully I explained that well. If not, leave a comment. But the main thing I wanna state here is that you can set whatever value you want here. So you could set, uh, this could be a function, this could be an array. Sometimes what you do is you can actually pass like this whole, like the entire state. So if somewhere down in your nested components, you want to set the user somewhere, you could just pass those as an array or you could pass those as an object. The choice is really yours. It's just up to you to know like what you want to store in your context. And you have to remember like, okay, if I'm storing an array here, then I need to probably, you know, make sure that I de destructure it like so. Okay. And that's basically it. I mean, I hope this was an okay overview of use, use context. Um, gave you a real life example using prop drilling, kind of refactor it a little bit to use the context. And this is kind of really useful if your app application gets really, really, really big and you have functions or state variables that you need to access from deeply nested components. And you don't want to have to keep on passing them during like through props using prop drilling. But I'm gonna wrap this video up because I think I've talked enough already. So again, this is a web dev junkie video. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to press that subscribe button. Also give me a like. And also I really want your feedback. So leave a comment below and we can discuss this further or we can talk about different examples of when you might want to use the use context hook or react.create context. All right, have a good day.